Well, good afternoon and welcome to Psychology 20. Uh, this is a brief introduction to the course of uh, Social Psychology, the Grade 11 course. And uh, I'd just like to welcome you to the, uh, to the online course. I think uh, this will be a great opportunity for us uh, to learn together. Uh, and uh, I want to begin, first of all, with just a definition for you of uh, the, the, the title of Social Psychology. Now, uh, a printed definition that I have available, and that's actually in your textbook, says this, that social psychology is the science of studying how each individual is influenced by the thoughts, feelings, and actions of others. It's the science which looks at people and their relationships. So a key word that I would pull out of there, that psychology, social psychology, is a science. And if you walk down the hallway in your school, wherever you're taking this course, uh, you probably naturally think about your biology lab and your chemistry lab as being a place where, uh, where students are studying science. But uh, according to this definition, and uh, according to the, the practices of psychology, uh, psychology is certainly a science. And the research in psychology uh, involves uh, the same sort of research process as is involved in an experimental research project that you might do in uh, in your science classes or in your chemistry class or in your biology or physics class. The other thing that, uh, that comes out of the definition is the idea that it's the behaviors of people based on the relationships that they have with others. And that's what makes the grade 11 course, social psychology, um, such a good course in that it looks at how we behave, why we behave based on uh, the interactions that we have with other people. So that's the, 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 the definition for social psychology. Now social psychology has, uh, has been around for some time, and, but most recently uh, it's been influenced and our behaviors and our thoughts have been influenced by a couple of new trends. And the, the first trend is that, of psych, is that of technology. Now just because you're taking this course, uh, this is something that hasn't happened in the past, where students would take a course where they can interact with other students uh, in an online discussion group. Uh, technology has given us an opportunity or has, has provided uh, and has made available uh, a relationship that hasn't existed in the past. And so technology is certainly one of the, the, the forefront uh, things of affecting our human behaviors and our human actions. The second thing that's affecting our, our human behaviors and that's changing is that of uh, social movement. Uh, we uh, consider ourselves to be part of a global population and it isn't a surprise for us to uh, see a news report from another part of the world and we just think that that's going to happen instantaneously. I can turn on this computer right now and I can find uh, information about what's happening in the war in, in, in any location in the world and uh, I can find that information out just, just in, in moments, and I could see actual video footage of that. Uh, in addition to that, we're traveling much more than we used to travel. The opportunity that we have to travel to different parts of the world uh, is different than it used to be, and that's affecting our, our, our thoughts, it's affecting our behaviors, and it's affecting our relationships. So two things that are really influencing social psychology uh, currently are technology and social movement. Now, Thinking about the past and before anybody was ever interested in studying this topic of psychology, psychology has sort of always been around in that it's uh, the study of, of, of behaviors of people. And uh, in the Aboriginal culture, for instance, if you think about uh, uh, population of people, the storytellers would probably act as the psychologists of, uh, within the Aboriginal culture. They took stories or they told stories and passed the stories down from generation to generation to generation. And so in terms of, uh, of psychologists, the story keepers were uh, or have been identified as being the psychologists within the Aboriginal culture. I want to talk to you just for a, a couple of minutes about one psychologist and his name is Yuri Broffenbrenner. How would you like to be uh, to walk around with that handle? Um, Yuri Broffenbrenner. But uh, Yuri Broffenbrenner in the late 70s came up with a theory uh, and a model for how we can understand this area of social psychology. And what he said is he said that there are sort of four different systems that influence our behaviors. And he called the first system sort of like a, like a ball. And, and at, the in, inner, at the core of the ball, 
he said there is something called a microsystem. And the microsystem uh, involves or it includes people like your parents and your siblings, and you're influenced by people within that microsystem. He said then there was another system that influences our behaviors, and this one sort of is a little distanced from the microsystem, and that's called the mesosystem. And he said that the mesosystem involves or includes people that might be part of your school community and people in your classroom. They're not as close to you as people in the microsystem, but they have an effect on your behavior. Then he said, there's another system, and that system is the exosystem. And that system would be those influences that happen within your community. And uh, there, if you live in, a, for instance, if you live in a small rural community, the influence of your exosystem would be different than if you lived in a small urban community or if you lived in a small city. And so there's the microsystem, which is your family. There is the uh, mesosystem, which is your the peers that you have sort of in your classroom. Then there's the exosystem, which is your community, and it might be the whole school, for instance. Uh, that would be your exosystem. And then he had one last system, and he called that the macro system. And the macro system are those things that influence you that are part of the culture. So just being a Canadian, uh, we, we act in certain ways, our language, we say things in certain ways, and that's part of our macro system. And so just according to Yuri, Brofen, Yuri Brofenbrenner, he said that our influences can be understood by looking at them in terms of these four different systems, the microsystem, the mesosystem, the exosystem, and then the macrosystem. Just one way to, uh, to, to sort of understand the topic of social psychology. We're going to be talking about Yuri Brofenbrenner in uh, future uh, courses and the work that we're doing, but uh, that's it for, for right now in terms of the introduction to social psychology. I'm really pleased that you've uh, uh, chosen to take this class and uh, to work together, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. Have a great afternoon.